Welcome to Meet the Biz. I, uh, I'm very excited about today because this, I feel like this is the new friend that I'm meeting today. Yeah. Uh, I know, right? Uh, and, uh, oh my God, he, I, I'm just going to get into it. Obi Ndefo. Obi yes. Ndefo. Hi, folks. Hey. How are you? You know, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, every day, um, I have a wildly different emotion. So, uh, <laughs> ranging from enormous depression to to wild anxiety to you know, serenity and 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 um, discovery, and it's it's a roller coaster. It's a whole it's a whole journey. This this what's going on in the world? Yeah. Wow, well, it it really is. And you, I mean, you're so. Uh, from what I've seen through videos on the internet, you're so spiritual and he yeah. you're such a healer beside being an actor. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, well, you know, acting, writing, directing is, is my life. It's in my, my bones and my blood. But, um, you know, um, I'm also a yoga teacher and, um, and uh, you know, holistic practices and that was sort of my my method of, of keeping keeping balanced and um you know uh keeping finances going in in lean times of of entertainment work um but also i'm a very very physical person i'm a very physical actor that's how i was trained and i love transforming with character work and using my body as as the you know my voice and my body so a lot of my work um Usually, it employs you know, uh, you know how to engage and maintain and develop the, my instrument, my body. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the list of credits you have. I, I watched some of the clips, and I was like, oh my god! I mean, of course, a regular on Dawson's Creek, yeah. uh, Stargate SG One. SG One, yeah. The, a couple of Star Trek Deep State Nine, uh, yeah. Star Trek Voyager. Yep. Oh my God, I loved it. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a fun fun range, you know. Um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm one of these people that's since I was very young committed to to the arts, you know. So yeah. When so. did you, I mean? When did you say I want to be an actor, or did it just happen? Did you like flow into it? That's a great question. I think as as a child, uh, I always, you know, it sounds it's kind of typical, but I loved um, I love Halloween. I love dressing up. I love, you know, um, I was a TV kid in the '80s, so I was just I was just really drawn to masks and to, um, you know, um, there's a lot of storytelling culture in, in my background. My father is Nigerian. He's Igbo, which is a big storytelling. Uh, arts culture. My mother's, you know, uh, Jewish, Russian, Polish Jew, and a, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, tribal Jewish lineage of, you know, great writers and and um, you know, so I I got kind of the double genetics of um, of I'm a, a big time storyteller, big time, you know. I love that. I love yeah. that. So, uh, getting to the Halloween, do you have a favorite? Do you remember your favorite Halloween costume? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, um, you know, I, I was a big Star Wars fan when I was younger and, um, you know, um, and still am. So I, I liked being Yoda. That was good. That was oh good. My God. Um, I have that, a little Yoda above my bed. <laughs> I was going to run and get it, but we know. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so you, you know, were, wait a minute. You, so you were Yoda. Yeah, I was Yoda. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, so that that was that was you know um, Star Wars came out first when I was five years old. So that you know when you're five and that that bomb gets dropped on you, it's like whoa, this is cool. You know, it's just the imagination. You know, I've I've always loved um, just just the effect I can have on people. I, I noticed when to elicit, you know, you know, tears or laughter and, and um, it, it's, it's a real, it's really uh, addictive, you know, it's really infectious that, that catharsis that we do in theater and film and television. Well, that, that's interesting and just made me think that that was one of your favorite 
Halloween costumes and why I'm discussing this because that was my favorite holiday for years. It's still in the top five. Yeah. But how you were Yoda and now you use yoga yeah. <laughs> and yeah. spirituality and healing, which yeah. is so Yoda-ish. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That kind of uh, Zen, kind of Buddhist, uh, Buddhist uh, type um, you know, these, these principles of acceptance and, um, and, um, gratitude and, you know, appreciation and reverence for life, reverence for life. Um, all these principles that we're really needing right now, I think at the, in this day and age, you know? Right. Um, well, you, so. you mentioned you act, you write, uh, I saw that you sang, you sing. Yeah. A lot of musical theater. Yeah, I did more musical theater. Well, I, I went to, to uh, Yale University undergrad. I went to the drama school at Yale in the acting MFA program and um, did quite a good percentage of musicals. And uh, part of me is, part of me, nothing is happier than being in a musical on stage and singing and acting and dancing. Oh you know? my God. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And uh, now it's like, do you, have you ever done like a one man show, a cabaret or? Uh, I I have there was um, there was uh, a one man show that was uh, actually I've been workshopping for years which I do I usually do bits of you know at in in venues um, and uh, it's called Candyland and it's it's about my childhood as it relates to all the candy I used to eat as a kid and all and my memories it's all threaded through like my life is a is a board uh, Candyland board game it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm yeah. just thinking because I'm a sugar holic. I've got to be yeah. very careful about it. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Do you, have you gotten more into healthy foods? Extremely so. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm raw vegan, uh, for about, uh, 10 years. Um, and, uh, I'm, I credit that to my survival uh, in the hospital, and I went through this recent um, transition in the the auto injury um, in uh, in August of this year, eight months ago. So, for those of you that don't know, I was um, uh, I was literally shopping at a health food store, Erwan, one of my favorite stores here in uh, in Los Angeles on Beverly Boulevard, and I was loading groceries into my the trunk of my car, and a drunk driver swerved out of nowhere and um and uh hit me from behind and took out took out my legs um i almost died and uh it was it's a miracle miracle i'm still alive and right leg was severed above the knee and the left leg was shattered had to be amputated above the knee a half an hour later at cedar sinai hospital and um you know i i credit my my love of and fascination with uh, healthy foods to my rapid recovery. Um, actually did no, made the choice to do no pain medication after the second major operation. Um, now why, why, why was that? Why not pain medication? Um, it's just part of my practice practices that um, I believe deeply in the healing power of natural foods, of organic natural foods, and um, just uh, holistic, holistic. Um, and I, I see, you know, what happens to some of the opioid addiction pathways. Um, and I found there was a, a, a couple of medications I, I had to take very briefly right around the, um, the surgery. And I found that because I'm so in tune with my body, because of the mindfulness and the yoga and the healthy eating, that the pain medication wasn't really addressing the pain. It was kind of, um, especially the opioids. It just, it, it threw, I started tripping and just threw me out. It didn't, so I did a lot of biofeedback and, and in, you know, myself, uh, you know, meditating and mindfulness. And I, I realized that the, um, a lot of the, the pain was actually my body trying to heal. And the more that I could feel those feelings as uncomfortable as they were, um, the, the more rapid, and the doctors were coming in saying, your tissues are healing so rapidly. How, you know, they were just stunned. And they, they were looking at the food I was eating because mm. I had all the food brought in 
uh, outside of the hospital. Um, that was all what I was eating before, but even more medicinal, you know, very um, bioavailable, plant-based, vegetarian, um, very uh, li life-sustaining food. I did a lot of probiotics instead of antibiotics. Um, and um, and I, I saw the effect. I, I never thought I would have to apply these principles of healthy eating and lifestyle to a trauma situation, but here I was and it, it was working. So it's, um, yeah, someone doing a documentary about the whole process. It's kind of fascinating. Well, yeah. and, and all that ties with power of the mind. Too. Yeah. Yes. Which, yeah. 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 Power of the mind. It was a real opportunity for me to use positivity in a scenario where, you know, I'm still going through it where it's, you know, so, you know, you could feel like your life is over. You know, my legs are gone above the knee and I'm an actor. How, you know, how do I, how do I survive? How do I, um, uh, how do I adjust? How do I, um, how do I view, how do you view uh, a life changing circumstance like this, you know? That's a that's a question that I had too. With, uh, I mean, this just happened to you. I mean, it hasn't even been a year. It's been right? it was eight months ago, yeah, almost eight, eight months ago. Eight months. How? When did you like accept? When did you say, okay, this is where I'm at? Uh, I'm going to tell you something that's going to sound kind of unbelievable, but I have a feeling that the moment that it happened, when I sort of woke up on my back a few minutes later, amazing, this amazing chef who's driving by pulled over and found me. I literally think David, within a few minutes, something in me rose up and saw what was going on and had the, the wherewithal to understand that there was something very profound and that on the spot I had to open wide sort of the aperture of my being and accept it on the spot. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, to to a certain degree, it's been a gradual step process since then. But I'd say you know a good fifteen to twenty percent of the whole deal. I was just like, you know what? I, I started repeating, "I'm alive, I'm alive, yeah. alive." You know, and and it was it was radical acceptance on the spot. I, I had to look at the positive. I had to. You know. Wow. I, I'm listening to you and taking you in, and, and, and I said, oh my God, after the interview, let's go over to my friend Angelo's house. I have to connect you two yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I know you guys would both uh, connect. And of course yeah. we can't, won't go over there right now, but who knows, maybe yeah. we'll do a, a Zoom, all, all, sure. we'll have a Zoom party. Sure. Um, but she, she, she had not the same exact experience as you, but yeah. she, the way she dealt with it was similar. Yeah. Um, and um, as I saw in one of your, your interviews about there's, there's a, a higher meaning or a, a, a different focus to your life. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I want to say, you know, something in relation to acting, you know, because you work with so many actors, is that I feel that my acting training being able to imagine myself in another's circumstances in order to play a role. Mm -hmm. And by extension, sort of the compassion and the empathy you have to have towards others just by virtue of taking on their given circumstances um, was to me real training for life. You know, right. that I, I literally had to have that same compassion for myself as if I was taking on the role of the new me yeah. Um, you know, and that that gave me tremendous empathy towards myself and towards, you know, anyone going through any type of difficulty, be it, you know, be it, you know, whatever, cancer, diabetes, you know, uh, Alzheimer's, depression, anxiety, all these things we have to cope with. Yeah. Um, and this was just one scenario that I, I it was like a role that I had was just thrust upon me, you know. How do you use yourself within your, like from before you, you use yourself in your acting? How do you feel it's different, majorly different now that you, when you play roles? You know, it's, I, I'm, 
I'm just getting, you know, back involved in because you know, in acting because it's such a severe, you know, medical recovery. Um, yeah. yeah. But um, the very interesting thing is that I I spent the last five years creating a television, co-creating a television series called Juice Bar, which um, great title is a comedy um, which is uh, a satire about everything I've been talking about, organic food and spirituality and yoga and astrology and all these things. And it's set in uh, 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 um, an organic juice bar and health center, like kind of an epic, but very childlike, almost like a Willy Wonka whimsical world. Um, and it's a lot of the, the spiritual template for the show is, um, is Sesame Street and, you know, and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Nice. Yeah, and a lot of development on the show. We spent, you know, we're six years in. I, I, I was the, the, the head writer. We're, you know, 11 episodes out of 14 for season one are scripted. We just had finished a round of meetings with uh, Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, uh, NBC, Paramount, Viacom, Warner Brothers. I mean, an epic round of meetings, and there was tremendous interest. But David, this is really interesting. Why? One of the reasons I bring this up about sort of purpose flowing through you, or like meaning, you know, you know, that we predicted the show would be important, you know, a show about health, which is it's you know makes fun of of, of places like Whole Foods and and you know Erwan and and Lassen's and all these stores, you know, uh, the natural marketplace. Um, but it's also, it's an educational show. You end up learning a lot about, because um, no one can agree, that's part of the comedy, but it's it's these wizards who work at the juice bar and everyone that comes in with their ailments, like, you know, I've got depression, I've got anxiety, I've got irritable bowel syndrome, I've, I'm afraid I'm gonna get coronavirus, and you know, all these, all these things that now, we're reopening these conversations with distributors because there's, now it's like ridiculous. There's a tremendous need for this show, you know? <laughs> Um, cause after this, after this, the, everything sort of settles a little bit with this, the social distancing and the, you know, the mass and the, 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 the Lysol and the Purell and everything. I mean, that's understandable. It's the, that's the front line to defense, but I think the dialogue is going to shift dramatically to how do we get healthy in the first place? Mm. How do we boost our immune system? So many people are going to get this virus. I mean, how do we boost our immunity? How do we build up antibodies um, and all these other pandemics that we haven't been paying attention to? Right. Being brought to the fore, like the diabetes, like the heart condition, all these things that, that, it, that is, are being um, brought out with the coronavirus. And, and, you know, so it's things we haven't been looking at with our health. Well, and, and it's, that show is perfect because you can enjoy yeah. it, you can laugh at it, and uh, whether you know it or not, subconsciously, it's like, oh yeah, I wanna go to the juice bar, I wanna eat healthy, I wanna, yeah. so it, it feeds you in that way, spiritually and through the comedy. Yeah, um, it's, it's like an edible set, you're right, David. It's like, it's literally like that scene, that reveal when Gene Wilder, um, or Johnny Depp, you know, brings the family and in, families into the Willy Wonka, that that two floor pan where you see, you know, but but instead of sugar, it's this cornucopia of like this organica. It's all these, you know, uh, amazing, you know, um, you know, like fruits and vegetables and fun rare herbs from around the planet. It's just this amazing um, magical world. That's all n nature. It's a nature yeah. show. Well, it's so interesting about, you know, what we're going through now because, yeah. what was it, four, I lose track of time. I think it's five years now. Yeah. No, it's six years. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Uh, um, it, right a week before my 50th birthday, I had what I call it as a heart healing. Wow. I had a massive heart attack. Wow, David, wow. So yeah. I had to... I had to switch my diet. I had to switch my exercise. Sure. I'm still here, thank God. But yeah. I noticed, you know, I started slipping a little and, you know, a little more, another cookie or another ice, you know, green tea ice yeah. cream. But, um, yeah. Yeah. but then with this happening and having to 
uh, self-distance and stay home and cook my own food, I have gone back to that, um, the beginning of that time where I'm really eating healthy again. I'm eating a lot of vegetables and fruit. Right. And yeah. I'm cooking better. And I, I did buy a pack of cookies the other day. But, you know, once in a while you can splurge. <laughs> sure. But, there you go. There you go. But it's just, I loved your vision of the Willy Wonka because I grew up that I could keep on wanting to say, what are you, an Aquarius? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You are? No, no, I'm a Scorpio. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know a lot about it, but, but I, I'm so identifying with you in so many ways because I sure. grew up loving Halloween. I love, like you said, Willy Wonka. I mean, I want to, I, I, I want to lick my own wallpaper, but it won't taste this. Uh, exactly, exactly. It's, it's a return to childhood. The show is really a return to childhood, you know. And when we were pitching to networks, we found that we were a couple years ahead of time. We were about two years ahead of ahead of time because we 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 were in, I think, maybe two or three years of some of the darkest television programming in recent history i feel you know you know a lot of these shows which are very very well well scripted intelligent clever you know from um you know handmaid's tale westworld game of thrones deadwood you know it's just how many ways can you cut someone's head off you know it's it's like you know i i can't really stomach the, the violence and especially the things that kids kids are subjected to um, so our approach was let's create shows that are equally engaging, incredible production value and, and on your edge excitement, but are more positive and uplifting and about and have human the healing people. quality. Healing qualities, yeah. So, but it's interesting how now we're going to reopen these, these conversations with the distributors to get this, get this show on the air. Because wow. now it's like the time that we really need this. Yeah, it really is. I mean, this is a, it's a perfect time. Yeah. That you're doing this. I can't, yeah. wait to, I can't wait to like be watching it every week. Yeah. 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 Um, super magical. And now you're a founding member of, I, I read Orphan Films. Um, yeah, there, there's been, um, there's, there's different components to what, to, to what, what, uh, what we created, but the overall umbrella is, a nonprofit called Arts Alliance for Humanity, right? Which is a which is a nonprofit based here at the Santa Monica Playhouse. Amazing, amazing, uh, uh, powerful small theater here in Los Angeles. Um, and it's half of what we do is keeping arts education in schools and in the community um, because we all work in, in the entertainment industry, but we're also um, you know, act, we're arts educators, you know, acting, teaching, screen, um, screenwriting, um, you know, with theater, music, dance, visual arts. And so we wanted to create um, a collective where we fight for arts programs, but the other half is a content collective, content collective. So that's narrative film, documentary film, stage plays, and television that we feel really needs needs uh, a voice that, that needs needs to really get out there globally um so orphan films is the is the film unit of that yeah if you had i mean we have the performing arts studio west family watching as well yeah. as the meet the biz family watching yeah. and everyone else who is watching there if you go. had to throw out something about going for your dreams or being being an actor um and using where you are who you are what what would you, what advice would you give well um i'm going to borrow from what what mr what one of my idols mr fred rogers um you know would used to say which is that you know there's no one on the planet that is uniquely you you know, there's no one, just to paraphrase a bit, there's nobody with your particular perspective and emotions and sensitivities and body and cultural background and experiences. I mean, we're so unique. So, you know, I think being an actor and going through that process of training as an actor and all the, all the in-depth training it requires and the endurance it requires to be a, a performer, to be a writer, um, one of the things that can't be stressed enough is really embracing who you are, mm. you know, 
and, and, and embracing the uniqueness of you, which sometimes can feel like the, the parts of you that are strange or, or crooked or dark or messed up or broken, you know, and it's, it's literally, that's become my philosophy in life and of acting is that we're, you know, we were created in, in this divine image of, of perfection, you know, and that includes every bump and scar and hair and every, every trauma you've experienced. And that goes super deep, David, you know, with everything we're going through now, every, every emotion, every, everything we're struggling with now, um, whether it's, you know, cosmic or it's toilet paper, you know, like <laughs> whatever it is, it's like, there's things are all divinely connected, you know? So I think that deep personal acceptance of, of yourself is one of the biggest keys in, in being an actor, being a, being an actor and having a powerful voice as an artist, you know? Um, thank you for today. You, uh, yeah. I'm just taking you in and I felt like, I felt like I got a healing from you. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, especially, I mean, everything you've said, but even by being you, because especially yeah. in this business, yeah. um, growing up, you know, a lot of times we feel like we have to, what do they want me to be? How yeah. am I, how can I make them like me? And it's exactly. not that. It's, right. it's exactly what you said. Yeah. You bring yourself flaws and all and and the way you said it you didn't use flaws because they aren't flaws right they're, they're beauty marks they're they're uh, pieces of you that, uh, that that are you exactly and there's something that happens when you start to come through with being genuine and authentic as an artist and this can be when you're playing something close to yourself or a total transformative character role but when you start to speak from that authentic, true place in your soul and your voice and your heart, it, you start to see that it really impacts people. And they start to not feel so alone. They start to feel included, you know? So I, I totally agree, David. It's like, it's, we, we go through that process of first wanting to fit in and modeling based on other people. And you start to figure out that's, that's a, Right. That's a fun house. That's a hall of mirrors, you know, where you're, you know, make yourself nuts trying to fit into what, you know, there's no, there's no rules. There's no rules. And that extends to the industry, how you, your trajectory of your career is going to be uniquely yours, you know? Right. So. Well, thank you um, again. And <laughs> let's keep in touch. We have to do. Yeah. <laughs> I seriously want to get like, so many this. things to talk about. Yeah. I know. I was like, Oh, I, I want to do more, but uh, we will. Yeah. We yeah. will. And come visit us at Performing Arts Studio West one of these days when we open Ab up again. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I want to make myself available to it's a good time, you know, for me to be hyper creative. And, um, and I'm getting into prosthetic legs now and that, that whole process. I just, you know, just, um, getting going with that and you know fundraising for the super high tech kinds and everything and i saw the gofundme i yeah I, yeah. yeah there's a, a gofundme i'm i'm going for the super robotic robotic legs where you know as an actor i can really be very versatile because i did you know do stunts and everything and wow. and you know perform on stage so to have that, those high functioning prosthetic legs is really important to me so is do you have a website or is there uh, somewhere yeah you know the best place actually is to go to the gofundme site because it has okay. so much so much of the videos and background and everything that's happened to me since the accident and and where my journey is now with the artistic work um but it's you know look up my name on Go, gofundme um um ob obi and then ndefo my last name but it, it has, ironically, the most fully comprehensive, you know, um, just media and descriptions about what I'm doing, you know, and what's what I'm going through. So, Thank you. I will, I'll be seeing you around. Yes, for sure. This is, this, we're planting uh, seeds here for the future, for, for sure. Yes. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Take care. You too. Be safe. Okay, bye-bye.